Hello and welcome to Cold Fear. Damn it, Hernandez. Talk to me. What's going on? I'm not getting anything here. Marcus. Law. Can you hear me? Come on. Somebody answer me. Is anybody alive out there? Come in. Get me another asset up there, pronto. Anything we've got. Anything. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. This is the USS Ravenswood. We arrived in the vicinity of the vessel and will now initiate a search patrol and look for it. Ravenswood out. Once again, I'm just going to take a little moment here to say that the game kicks off with a lot of talking, so I'll just leave that to run and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, people, you know your assignments. Hanson, you've got main deck port side. Watch yourself. You're going solo. How come Hanson gets all the fun? Because he's prettier than you are in a sand post and I'll cut the chatter. This place is creeping me out. Where is everyone? Steady, Friedman. Remember, I've got that extraction code in case things get hairy. Morning party, this is the Ravenswood. The seas are too rough. We're gonna have to head back. You're on your own, people. You heard the man. Keep it tight. Hey, Morgan, did you hear that? Hear what? What's that smell? These old Russian whalers all stink to high heaven. What's that? Open fire! Open fire! Come in, come in. Hello for the third time. Welcome to Cold Fear. Got a little bit to explain as we're mucking about here. We're on a ship, we'll get to the name of that later on and why we're really here. Taking a quick look around, the ship is uh, apparently in a extremely heavy stormy conditions. If we try to go back the way we apparently came from, we find that we can't go that way, so we must have climbed up over the side of the ship. How exactly we got here on our own, I do not know, but we we're, here we are. Right off the bat we're introduced to notes. Now these are bits, sheets of paper, they can be story or gameplay related that are just lying around. This example, it just uh, gives you the basic thing you'd expect from a kind of survival horror game like this. It says to, well, um, watch your ammo, search bodies, and try not to die. That's more or less it. Just, uh, any more of these, I'm not going to actually show them, I'll just briefly explain what they are, but um, I'll not bother you with having to read. You can read them in the thread, or um, if you're watching on the Bad Aid site, you can see them below the video. So what we have to do is make our way over to the other side of the ship. We're currently on the port side of the ship and we have to make our way over to the starboard. The deck we can move down here will lead us down to the rear deck of the ship. We can make our way across that way. And on our way we can show off some of the gameplay mechanics. The game has both free and over the shoulder aiming. Uh, we'll only be using over the shoulder because um, I'm not an idiot and I want to use the one that's actually useful. 
got some good old crates over here. We can bust these open and sometimes they'll have some stuff inside. Um, it's always the same thing whenever you break the crate. The, the game is very regimented that way. Here's just um, a quick thing. We've got, um, obviously, a very stormy sea out there and we want to stay as far away from that as we can. But if we want, we can drop off the edge. But luckily, it's not that big of a deal because we, um, after a little bit of an animation, we'll get a prompt and we can lift ourselves back up. Uh, also, it gives us a chance to show off the resistance bar. What that is, is basically your energy. It ties into a couple of things, mainly your run meter and that sort of thing, which we'll get to later on. But um, if that runs out, you fall to your death, or if you just tap down, you'll, um, you'll also fall to your death. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's uh, get out of here. We'll uh, slowly make our way down here and then we'll try to run. You'll see that that decreases the resistance bar as well. By the way, I'm playing on normal difficulty and uh, there's an Extreme Run uh, companion video series with this. We'll get to see how I uh, fare with that. Before we even get to the point where we're fighting any enemies, we have to contend with environmental hazard. Here on the deck, we... Oh! We have some swinging crates. We just... Um, they're not particularly difficult to avoid. Here's what happens if you do get hit. It takes off a little bit of energy. Anyway, here on the rear deck, we don't actually need to explore around here right now. We can just carry on to the um, starboard side and go up that way. But for the moment, we're going to look at that flare up there, which I guess is what pinpointed the ship for us. I remember the cutscene, we did actually see that, and that was what led us towards the, the ship itself. It wouldn't be an LP of mine if we didn't have some disappearing geometry. We can switch to wireframe mode, we can get a better look at it as we uh, move in and out of what presumably would be the visibility sector on the rear deck. It removes those objects, and uh, yeah, it's not, not much more to it than that, but that was a, one way to show it off. Wireframe does make things look very complicated. Let's take a look at this building above the rear deck and see what's there. We look over the railing, we can see the starboard side, which is where we're heading to, but we'll, we'll get to that soon enough. Up here is the flare, and oh, oh boy, he, he does not look in good nick at all. He's got no head, and he's got a gaping hole in his abdomen. That's, uh, take a look at the flare and it's very nice and flary and it's and burns. A nice touch to have the flare here because it was in the intro sort of sequence and it's nice to see that that effect carries over into the actual gameplay. The sign says in Russian, rear deck house. Let's take a look inside. Ah! There's not much in here, it's pretty much just a shed with some rope inside. We'll be coming back later on, but for the moment there's nothing here except for some pistol ammo which we cannot pick up. 42 being the maximum number of pistol rounds we can carry at a time. Back outside and there's well, there's not really much else to show. We'll just go down the other stairway and we'll make our way um, over to the starboard side. We'll not go right down to the far end, we'll take a, sort of a different way down. Another early example, before we're actually supposed to know about it, of um, aiming at the signs and getting the Russian in English. Sometimes it's a little awkward to aim at it, but there you go. Okay, we can leg it to the other side of the deck, and it gives us a chance to show off the lovely exploding barrels. One shot there will set it on fire, additional shots won't make any difference at all. It all doesn't set it on fire, and then blow up the crits and we can drop down that way. But before we do that, if we decided to go down the rear of the deck and uh, go down the steps there, you'd find that um, every time you walk towards those steps it actually triggers an effect. A nice little splash of water that actually looks pretty good whenever you're running down that way. And if you do it over and over and, and, and over and over and over and over again, eventually you'll bug it out and you'll find that sweet spot where it triggers and you'll kind of crap it out. A nice look at that and also shows some of the lightning effects as well. It makes it, don't see it very often, at least you're probably not looking in the right direction whenever it does happen, but it does look quite cool when the lightning goes off. So on to the starboard side we go, and we're given a warning about the rolling ship probably going to knock us overboard. That's not the danger we have to worry about. That's the danger we have to worry about. Also, um, try not to run into these, they hurt you. And the water crashes onto the side of the ship and splashes onto the deck and if we get hit by that we are fucked. And as an example of that, the game spawns an enemy, um, one of the mercenaries on the ship. He happened to time it just so he didn't get hit by anything. But if we wait long enough, bam. 
waves actually crash at two positions, one um, close to us and one far away. If you're anything like me, then you'll wait till the nearest splash is gone and then you'll leg it, but unfortunately that times it perfectly, so you do get hit by the second one. Oh dear. What happens when you get hit? Thing, which I thought was interesting. If you fall off the edge and hang there, rather than the way of doing nothing to you, it'll instantly knock you off. I thought that was a, a very nice touch by the developers. So it's time to move on. Let's take a look at what's in. Oh. Oh god. These Russian boats aren't exactly built the same as ours are. Better read the inscriptions so that I don't get lost. Let's see how much of my Russian I still remember. Tom, I, th I think you you need to fix your priorities here. I think the blood all over the floor is probably more important. Um, but uh, yes, this is where we find out that we can read Russian, which is useful. Store room there. We cannot go through that door. It's a one-way door, as is the one down here. Can get in normally, and it tells us that it's. Uh, well, if you can't figure this out, then yeah, I suppose you've got problems of your own. But yeah, we can break this and we can move on. I can shoot this. I can shoot this. Well, this seems like a good place as any to show off that Tom is a melee attack. <laughs> Or maybe it's not the best place. Er, okay, if, if you shoot it, then that's fine, it breaks. Um, if you get a little bit too close, then you take a little bit of damage, but if you stand too close, then you're kind of fucked. It just sticks you there, and you can't move until you completely die. Unlocked indeed. I wonder who they think we are. They did call us one of them. It doesn't sound like they are particularly friendly. We can't go back the way we came. The door beside us is locked and there's a burning fire in front of- Oh, oh. God damn. At least we get a look at how firefighting works in this game. Unfortunately, it's probably the worst possible scenario to show it off. Because the over the shoulder camera is over the right shoulder, it means we cannot see those guys around the corner if we aim this way. It's a lot of poking out and blind firing, and believe me, when it comes to the extreme run, this is a fucking nightmare. I wasn't able to trigger the message the first time around, so here's a, a little clip of it saying it's too hot to go that way. Something else I think is pretty damn cool is that it's got smoke along the ceiling, and I think that's a really nice touch. So, uh, let's see what we can find. We've got a bunch of doors here, but we'll worry about them in a moment. We'll leg it up here to the guys, and yeah, it's, looks like that's what we have to do. But first, I'm going to show you another way to kill those guys, was to um, set up the exploding barrel and kill them that way. Unfortunately, what that means is that whenever someone dies, they are all burned up and you're not able to actually get any items from them. That includes um, pistol ammo or any other kind of weapon ammo and um, health packs as well, so you have to be very careful. And you really you don't want to set people on fire all that often because the, they are one of the main sources of ammunition that you've got. And the job is done, the fire is out, and uh, more importantly the alarm is shut up as well, and that's pretty annoying. Stroll around, we'll get rid of that barrel, because uh, you, you never know when that might become a problem. And then we're pretty much free just to start checking out the doors. Start with this one. Looks like we find another one of the Russian guys. These are the mercenaries that actually um, live on the ship. Nothing again that time. Um, Tom says something a little bit different every time you, you fail to get something, but never mind. And as an experiment, I decided to try this. I wonder how long it would take to melee someone to death. And go! And I forgot the melee button. There it is. Ah! 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 Ah!
Ooh. Hey, where are you going? This game doesn't have havoc physics or anything like that, but it does try to correct itself now and then. The ship is indeed still rolling and we can't see that in the animations. Move on to door number two. Ah, rats! Oh, fucking hell, bloody th Oh, animal cages. Um, where are all the animals? Oh. Appears to be a primate of some kind on this table. Here I'm trying to get a, a bit of a better angle on it. Oh, it's flying its face. Oh, it's crawling over its eye. That's horrible. Oh, God. Uh, uh, oh, there's a better angle. Oh, get off its face. Anyway, here's what the health packs look like. They're, um, they're just white boxes. There's a bunch of other stuff on the walls. So there's just appear to be equations and things are too low res to really make out what any of them say but um yep that's that's pretty much this room Ugh. here's a short aside just to show you how good some of the audio can be in this game um, just listen for the alarm um, and listen to where it's coming from That's a very nice touch. It adds, it adds a lot to the game when um, the audio is that well put together. There's actually an extensive amount of information about the audio in this game by the guy who um, put it all together. I'll, I'll link that in the thread. I think it's a very interesting watch actually. It's a couple of cool videos. Rats! Oh god, what happened here? We've got a bunch more animal cages and a thing. Oh, sir? Sir? Hello? Oh Jesus! You motherfuckers. This is one of the few jump sort of thingies in the game. This is really doesn't happen much anymore. Uh, most of these are right at the start of the game. Not really anything more to see here. Um, let's just go. Right, so what about this door? Let's go check that out. Uh, no. Uh, maybe next time. Okay, let's head off through the corridor we opened up. Just to be on fire. See, someone must have set fire to some of the boxes over there. Oh, the armory. No luck, right? And uh, we've got a note here about the armory itself. All it really says is uh, this place contains a lot of different kinds of ammo and uh, we're in a corrosive environment and, uh, well, do not smoke and do not fuck around with the ammo. Indeed, no matter what weapon we have, well, almost whatever weapon we have, we can uh, come back to any armory point and just completely restock in one go. It's very handy to have. And before we go, here is some concept art. We'll be seeing some more of that in the future. And another note here, this one about electrical boxes. Um, these notes have a tendency to either come too early or too late. What this one does is tell us that we can shoot electrical boxes to open doors. It also gives us some information that comes in handy a little bit later on. It tells us that if we shoot one of these electrical boxes and it's near some water, then uh, there can be lots of trouble. Take a break from showing off the water effect and move on to actually doing something. We've got a choice here. We can go to the crew quarters or the portside cold rooms. Of course, our cold rooms are down there. Um, I think I think we'll go for a crew. Maybe we'll meet someone we can talk to. Oh, I know that symbol. That means we're going to get health. And here we have my favourite voice clip of the game. Great, it's locked. Fucking door has the nerve to be locked. And inside the sick bay, it looks like someone's had a bit of trouble here on the bed. But uh, the important thing is the medical cabinet over here. This acts just like med kits, but it is multiple med kits all in one. You, uh, I think on normal you get about six uses out of it before it's empty, but yeah, it's, uh, you can keep coming back here for health until it disappears. And before we go, some more concept art. 
here we've got um, that guy and uh, a page from someone's diary. We, um, I, I'm not actually going to tell you what's in this. Um, you should read this on up yourself. The game has a tendency to kind of spoiler itself in advance, and this I think gives away too much. So if you, if you're interested, go read up. But I'm not going to say what it is. Um, where did that axe go? Hmm. Well, these lockers, uh, unfortunately, they're just here for decoration. Um, shooting the padlocks do nothing. We've got a padlock lying on the ground, which is a, an odd little detail. And this uh, locker has a little X on it too, but there's apparently nothing you can do with it at all, which is very strange. What kind of whaling ship is this? I'm going to need an electronic key to open this sucker up. Sucker up. Can't go any further that way, so it's time to make our way back downstairs. This time we'll go to the uh, portside cold rooms that we saw before. Trundle down the steps and get out the door. And then down we go. Oh boy. This is actually pretty fancy stuff. If you watch the water, you can see it actually rolls with the ship too. And that actually becomes important later on, and we'll, uh, we'll get to that. We do have some doors off to the side, but as it suggests, we can't actually open them until we get rid of the water. That won't be happening for quite some time, so we can put that to the back of our minds and um, have a look around. We've got a corpse with us here, and some fancy blood in the water for uh, people like me to talk about at length. And up here we've got another door. This is um, uh, the uh, the fish hold, um, otherwise known as the whaling room. We can't actually open it. Even though it looks like it does have a handle, we cannot open it. What we need is one of those circular sort of wheel things, and for some reason it doesn't have one. Right, let's go get that sparkly thing. Actually, no, I think... I th something tells me I don't want to pick that up right now. I'm going to go back here and uh, again this door can't be opened and we I can see there's an electrical box there and that feeds back to the, the note I mentioned before by um, touching into the water. We are not going to be shooting that. Let's just pick this up. Whatever. Anyway, I think everyone saw that coming. Let's have another look at it and see um, just how exactly it's working. If we walk back into it, um, yeah, he, he, he doesn't even try to hug us or hurt us or anything, he does absolutely nothing. Just flops over. And as you might expect, if we shoot him in the head, he does nothing at all. And as a final thing, what we can do is, uh, once we pick it up, it's when we walk away from him towards the camera that it actually triggers, but it means we can go behind him and fanny around there. And it means if we hug the left-hand wall and walk along, you can see that the, the actual kind of cutsceney bit teleports us somewhere else and it sort of jiggles him around and everyone ends up in all sorts of weird positions. Well, that's that done with. We uh, need to make our way back up to that electronic door we saw um, up near the sick bay. Fast forward through that, it's fairly uneventful. It's unlocked. Boing, 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 boing. So here we have the crew quarters, which isn't quite right, that's the doorway behind us that we just came from. The shower is down this end, and... Ooh, captain's quarters. Let me in, let me in, let me in! Ah, oh, damn it. We'll head back away with KM. We'll go down to the other end of the corridor and see that we are in fact blocked by more fire. Hmm, how are we going to get a ride? We do this. Oh God, help me! <laughs> Got some more nifty smoke in the ceiling once again. Let's, um, let's just head back and see if we can find another way around. We've got two doors. Uh, we'll, we'll avoid the unlabeled one for the moment, and we'll uh, we'll try the showers first. What the hell is that? What do you think it is, Tom? It's a man missing half of his head and a good portion of his abdomen. I thought the US Coast Guard would have some fucking men, not little girls. Ah, there's another one over there. There must have been some kind of party over there. Ah! Yeah, that's right. Tom Hansen, Coast Guard assassin. So, uh, interesting thing about this guy over here in two parts is that he's actually two separate entities and, uh, oh, 
Oh, hey there. How are you? Um, who's that sexy guy? Yeah, that's what I thought. So yeah, we can, um, actually, because there's, there are two independent entities, we can search them both independently and collect ammo from both halves. It's, it's a, little, a little odd to do. Oh, hey, were you, were you listening to all of that? Um, yeah, n no witnesses. So it's time for some fancy pants stuff. If you look uh, below my feet, we can see the reflection of um, Tom just sort of mucking around there. Obviously we've got it on the wall where the mirror is as well. And then if we switch to wireframe mode, we can get a better look at what's actually happening. You can see that it actually just mirrors the geometry on the floor and also on the wall. And also gives us a chance to just sort of see this guy appear out of nowhere behind the stall. Blam. And an extra thing is, um, just a, a minor stupid thing that I always find, is that you can pick stuff up through bits of wall. See him uh, behind the wall there. Might as well get a bit of a shower while we're at it. Yeah. Wash away those crimes. Pickpocket this guy's pants through the wall, and we will be on our way. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at this wobbly lump thing again. Let's try and explain this. Um, these are uh, these are rigged in some way to, to sway with the ship, but um, unfortunately, whenever you come through the door, they're in a particular state where they've got a, a lot of force behind them, so they end up just jiggling about all over the place. And it makes it look extremely shoddy, when it's actually a reasonably sensible effect to do, but they've, they've just fucked it up um, pretty badly. Oh, I wonder what's in here. Ooh, people! Jesus Christ, okay, watch his head. Whee! Happens sometimes whenever you shoot them in the head, uh, a big chunk of it will fly off, but um, it doesn't actually go anywhere, it just disappears, but it looks really cool. It looked like it just blasted his head right off. Well, I, I guess we're in the mess room, there's no sign for the place, so I'm just going to assume that it is. But, um, quite a lot of tables, very, very, it's very tight squeeze to sit anywhere. A couple of somebody broke the TVs. Uh, well, at least we've got some books, I suppose. Anyway, let's uh, go on into the next room, which happens to be the galley. Maybe we can get ourselves something to eat. Right. Um, oh, someone's left the gas on. Oh, that, that can be that can be quite dangerous, you know. Um, oh, meat. Tasty, tasty meat. Ah, oh, they're fuckers. Might as well check them for ammo. And there's another little thing here, which is one of those... This is another nice day, it's completely pointless, but if you shoot the gas hob, it catches fire. For some reason, there's... If, if you follow Tom's head, he looks off towards what looks to be a door, at least some sort of, um, I guess, a larder or something there, but we can't open it, and it really irritates me when he looks at something and you, you can't see what it is, and there's nothing there to interact with. Also, we, we've got a view out the window, which is rare for most of the rooms, and we've got some more meat, but uh, I kind of lost my appetite. The other wall has various cans and bits and bobs and not really much else. There's actually really nothing to do in this room at all other than that um, surprise jerk jumping out of the cupboard. So uh, let's uh, pop through the door and see if we can deal with that fire. And as you can see we've come out on the other side of it. Luckily enough there's another valve and we can turn on the sprinkler system. Oof, there we go. Oh, oh man. If only you'd waited a few more seconds, you would have been fine. The fire was already out by the time you fell on your knees. Oh, such a waste. Hey, hey, go back here. All burned. Okay, we're done here. We can um, head up to the radio room, but we're not going to go there. We're going to head out to the front deck where there is fun to be had. Bullets are not fun. Well, we're going to leave him to his own devices and we're going to go this way instead. And here we've got another guy just kind of hanging out. 
and he's got a note beside him and this one's about barrels and this one's interesting in that it, it talks about the crew of this ship positioning barrels strategically to um, to kill all their people which is weird because who the hell's going to kill them they've never had anyone to worry about up until now it's really silly so this guy's been merrily firing away the whole time and he'll keep on doing that regardless if you can see you or not um, uh, yeah it gives you an idea of just how difficult it is to aim when you're standing on the deck uh, although here I did actually happen to get really lucky and killed him in a couple of shots through this window is the galley uh, that we can't see inside this time but yeah here is the front deck uh, it must be downstairs that's Tom talking about the radio um, or the emergency radio code that we're after that's um, uh, to remind you that's held by Lansing who's one of the guys on the team front deck. Um, it would be really nice if there was a camera uh, position off the front of the ship so that it was looking on to the ship. Kind of like this bit of concept art that looks, it would be nice if it had that because that would look absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately we don't. Um, so let's make our way down onto the main deck itself. Um, here's another concept art from above. Take a look at the effect the role of the ship has on uh, Mr. Bony Arm here. I wonder what happened to him. Not particularly exciting, but I always make a point of killing that one guy with the barrel every time. I don't know why I just get a bit of satisfaction, but moving on, we. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about rooms that, uh, well, optional rooms, I guess. These are rooms that you don't need to go into, but there's something special about Cold Fear and that there's so many optional rooms that you don't even know are there. There's quite a lot of doors that don't really look like doors, or they just look like random bits of texture and stuff. You never really know until you walk up to them. And the door to get into this room was one of those. I really had no idea this even existed until very recently. And there's um, another door I had no idea even existed um, after years of playing the game. And just randomly found it on the last test play I did before starting this LP. It was astounding just how much stuff there is in there. And I know there's still more to find and uh, I intend to have a look at whenever I get further on. Our objective is over on the port side of the ship, off to our right, but we're, um, we're going to go over this way first. Look over here, we've got some uh, swinging bit of crane there, we obviously really want to avoid that, it looks very, very painful. And here's something that the game does for you, it tells you when you're going the wrong way. Now that's, that's, sometimes it's very handy, it feels a bit ham-fisted sometimes. As you might have noticed from the sign, that door goes through to the storeroom, which then leads us back to the very first door that we met with the uh, electrical lock. It ends up where we actually make a loop all the way around the ship and as I said before, once we go through the storeroom we can't get back. In the meantime, however, we're just going to have a look around here and, and just sort of take in how the game looks. There's, um, there's a couple of little angles here that I get where the game looks... I, th I, I personally think that the game looks particularly beautiful. So here we are at our destination. This is where, um, well, this is the dormitory. This is where everyone who doesn't get their own uh, lovely little room ends up going. It's also the place we need to get to in order to find Lansing. Let's go and see what's up inside. Well, it's um, suitably atmospheric, I suppose. Let's take a look at some of the little cabinet drawer things we've got here. Um, we've got a page from Dr. Kamsky's diary. Now once again, this is very spoiler heavy stuff, um, you can read it below um, or in the thread. But yeah, read it at your own risk, I'm not going to mention it here, at least not yet anyway. On top of the drawers, beside the guy with no top, um, we've got uh, some magazines and they come from this particular texture. Hooray for Russian. Well, things seem pretty okay here, pretty benign, I mean, this is even worse. <laughs> As you might have guessed, this guy's trigger to wobble about whenever you walk past. If you leave him here, I'm gonna melee him here so he falls on his back and that kills him and it sort of turns him off. But if you leave him there and then walk past him and then walk back in the other direction, he'll trigger again and start wobbling. There's not much in here. We've got, again, more ammo that we can pick up, but that's fine. And over here we've got a door. It's got some smoke under it or something, but um, yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. Through the bed there, you can see um, someone. We'll get to them in a second. And um, 
Over here we've got uh, a guy dead and um oh hey ma'am how are you um, anyway um yeah if we look through the the gap in the bed here we can see there's a, a body or uh, that's not lancing is it oh shit yeah well if we get too close it uh it'll trigger um the cutscene but we can still kind of look at it from uh, from, uh, from this distance anyway what we can do here is uh well we can try and aim at him and, and fire off some shots it doesn't make any difference to the uh, the model at all it's not like the other corpses where you can shoot off the head and things like that it just doesn't react at all Lansing? oh man At least I found the code. Well, we find Lansing, or what's left of him anyway. Just take some ammo out of the stump. Um, I, I don't know how his head fell on the floor. I don't know, uh, you poor guy. Uh, we can try and get a better look at it. Unfortunately, he's face down and we, we can't really get a good angle to, to properly look at him and try to shoot it if we like, but it'll make no difference. This bathroom is disgusting. Um, a quick thing here, we the way we had documents to show off, we've also got objects as well. Then you're not going to see this again because then it really comes up, but you can see here we've got uh, the radio code. We also know what our next objective is as well. We uh, need to get to the radio room and hardly enough we know exactly where that is. So let's go. That, when you see this guy for the first time and he screams like that and comes legging it towards you, it's really fucking fr fr Ah, fuck! God, oh god, oh god, oh god! Well, um. Well, I did shoot it in the head and it's, it doesn't look like it's gonna get back up. Looks like it's gonna be one of those games. I have to shoot everything in the head. Ah, right, okay, maybe that's why I've got so much ammo. <laughs> I'll just go about my business, making sure that everyone here is down will stay down. Uh, I, I guess it was to be expected. Um, you can't really expect to be going through a horror game like this without some sort of beastie. Well, I guess that's actually kind of it. Um, we're going to end the episode here and uh, we'll come back and further the adventures next time. We'll uh, we'll get to figure out just what the crap was. Well, actually, no, we won't. We won't figure out for quite a while. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll see you next time. Next time on Cold Fear. Great. Just great.